Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new around here, I'm Amanda and I'm a mom to three crazy kids. And I am in no way a professional cook, but I like to share what I feed my family every week to give you guys some dinner inspiration. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos, especially now because I'm doing Vlogween. So you will see a new video from me every day in October. This week I get to collaborate with my friend Valerie from DNV's family. First of all, just look at her channel. Her thumbnails are beautiful. But if you need another reason to subscribe to her, she shares tons of shop with me's grocery hauls, cleaning motivation, product reviews what's for dinner and lunch, basically all the mom life content you could possibly need. So definitely go check out her what's for dinner video after you're done watching mine. Let her know I sent you, give her all the love, and now let's get into dinner number one. Now we just sing the la 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 Alright, so first up, I'm making a recipe I got from Pillsbury.com. It will be linked down below, and it's for a barbecue chicken bunt sandwich. So I'm using some Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, of course, and then I'm using these Purdue Simply Smart uh, chicken tenders that are new to me, and they were wonderful, if you're wondering. But you can use some shredded chicken breast or any chicken that you want. You'll need two packages of Crescent Rolls, a bunt pan, and some cooking spray. So I'm getting started by just spraying my bunt pan just to be safe and then you're just going to take your crescent roll dough out of the tube and you're not going to unroll it or anything. You're just going to place both halves into your bunt pan. I bought like the off brand crescent rolls so mine kind of fell apart. I don't know if Pillsbury's would be better but I just smushed them together to make one giant circle. Then you're just going to bake the crescent roll according to the package directions and I'm also cooking my chicken strips in the oven as well. So once your crescent roll is done cooking, you're going to remove it from the original bunt pan and put it on a plate. And then you're just going to slice it in half like you would a sandwich. Now mine kind of fell apart. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It did fall apart, but it's okay because you're going to cut the sandwich up anyway. And then you want to remove like the inside of the crescent roll, eat it, give it to your toddler, you know, throw it out. I don't know why you would though. Um, but you need to take this all out so that you can fit all the chicken inside. So then when the chicken is done, I'm just going to slice that up into little chunks. Give me a chance. Yeah, baby, try, try, try. Just one more night. Then make up your mind, mind, mind. Please don't say that it's goodbye, bye, bye. If you just believe it. And then you're just going to squirt on a layer of barbecue sauce and then your chicken and then more barbecue sauce and then your cheese of choice. I'm just using this Philadelphia creamy melt Colby Jack cheese, but you can do whatever you like. You can also add some red onion on here. That's what I would like, but my family doesn't. And then I just sat this back in the oven. It was turned off, but it's still warm inside so that cheese can melt. I know I messed up. Yeah, I know I did you wrong. But I learned my lesson Now what if we could move on? Remember the good days I wish that we could go back I know And for a side, I'm going to be making some ranch fries in my air fryer. So I'm just getting started by cutting my potatoes into a wedge cut, but you can do any style cut that you like. But I just love ranch and barbecue together. I just think they go so well together on any kind of barbecue chicken sandwich. I like to have ranch with it too. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. But I thought ranch fries would do the job perfectly. So the trick to getting super crispy fries, whether in the air fryer or the oven, is to let them soak in cold water for like 30 minutes. That's going to remove a lot of the starch and then you just want to make sure you pat them really, really dry. And then once the potatoes are in my air fryer basket, I'm just using this ranch packet with dill. If you haven't tried the one with dill, definitely give it a try. It is so good. I like it way better than a regular ranch. And then I'm just drizzling on some olive oil and tossing these really well to coat. I cook these on 450 for about 20 minutes. Just keep checking them to see if they're to your desired crispiness and then it's tender inside. Alright 
Also, when I'm having like a steam fresh veggie on the side I, that we just threw in the microwave, I like to put some garlic powder and then cheese or butter in right in the bag, shake it up, and then I just fold it up and let it sit until we're ready to eat and all that cheese melts and they stay warm. All right, so here's my plate. This was definitely a family favorite. My kids loved the barbecue chicken sandwich and the fries are always amazing when there's ranch on them. So making the crescent rolls in the bun pan is a little more time consuming, but I think it's super fun and just something different. So I definitely recommend giving it a try. Again, the recipe will be down below. All right, for dinner number two, I'm making some queso chicken baked tacos. So first we're gonna make the queso chicken in the crock pot and I was playing around with different ideas but I basically just took a queso recipe and then added chicken to it. So I'm adding a can of Rotel and then an entire block of pepper jack cheese and I just cubed it up so it would melt easier and a half a block of cream cheese and we're gonna use the other half later. Then I'm just adding a half a cup of milk but you can use any liquid you wanted and then some pepper, paprika, chili powder and of course onion and garlic powder because that goes in everything. Then I just cooked this on low for six hours and then when the chicken was cooked, I just shredded it mixing it all into the queso sauce. Then I added the other half of the cream cheese just to amp up that creaminess a little bit. I wanted it to be more queso dip like and not so liquidy. Give me a chance. Yeah, baby, try, try, try just one more night. Then make up your mind, mind, mind. Please don't say that it's goodbye, bye, bye. If you just believe it, I know we can make it. We used to be strong, love. Don't forget where you're coming. And as you can see, the cream cheese pretty much melted just from me stirring it, but I did pop the lid on and just let this hang out to make sure it was all melted. And then you're just going to take your corn tortillas and lay them out on a baking dish and spoon that queso chicken right on top. Then you're just going to fold each taco in half laying it pretty flat it should smush together just fine and stay it together then i'm just making room for some more tacos because you can fit nine on a tray we used to be strong love don't forget where you're coming from a heart like that don't give up that easily Then I'm just going to spray the tops of the tacos with some cooking spray so they get really crispy. And then you're going to want to put another baking sheet on top so they stay flat when they cook and they don't like raise up. And then I did flip them halfway through the cooking time so that they will get crispy on all sides. For the side, I'm going to be making a cilantro lime corn salad. This is, I did follow a recipe for this, so it will be linked down below. So I'm just getting started by heating up some olive oil and adding my frozen corn. You can use fresh corn if you want, and then seasoning it with some salt and pepper. For the dressing, you will need some mayo and then the juice from two limes. And then I'm adding some garlic powder, paprika, and some pepper. And the only difference that I did from the recipe was add some of the Trader Joe's chili lime seasoning. Then you're just going to add your warm corn right to the dressing and give it a good stir. Then you can add some shredded pepper jack cheese or any kind of cheese that you like. And you can also add cilantro at this point. My son hates cilantro. So I just individually added it to everyone else's plate that likes it. I'm sorry. All right, and this is my plate, and I just have some sour cream and salsa on the side. These were so, so good. Perfect appetizer for any football parties or Halloween parties that you have. These are so good. And the corn salad on the side was definitely something different that we wouldn't do normally, and it was surprisingly really, really good, but I love cilantro, so that makes everything good to me. 
All right, next up I'm sharing my fave, which is Cajun Chicken Alfredo. I think I share this like once a month, but you have to bear with me because my tripod broke this night and I was doing my best with one hand. So I'm just taking some thinly sliced chicken breast and sprinkling on this Cajun seasoning on both sides. You're going to cook this in some olive oil until it's well browned and then you can remove it from the pan. And then right in that same pan with all those juices from the chicken, you're going to add your veggies. Today I'm just using some red peppers and some fresh broccoli. And then I'm just going to saute them for a little bit. And then I'm going to add my jarred alfredo sauce. You can make your own. You do you. Um, but I needed something quick so I'm just adding some jarred alfredo. But I do add some extra garlic in there because we love garlic. Then I'm just going to let this hang out and simmer until all those veggies are tender and I'm cooking some penne pasta on the side. So once the veggies are done and your pasta is done, you can add that right to the sauce, give it a really good stir, and then I just slice the chicken and place that on top and it looks beautiful. This is definitely my family's like favorite meal. It is a little spicy, but my two year old eats it so it can't be that bad. And I just wanted to show you the pan after we're done eating, like there's literally never any leftovers with this meal. And the last meal I'm sharing today is an unstuffed cabbage roll skillet type thing. So I'm just browning some hamburger meat, but to make this super healthy, you could use turkey, whatever you like. And then I'm just adding some onion, some bell pepper, and then I had some carrots. If you see my last grocery haul, I have a lot of carrots and I'm trying to use them up. So I just shredded some of those in there. Why not? Try to get all the veggies that we can. We used to be strong, love. Don't forget where you're coming from. A heart like then once those veggies had time to hang out and get a little bit cooked, I'm adding my whole head of cabbage, well almost a whole head. I'm not really using the right pan here and it gets dangerously close to overflowing, but it all worked out. So I did season this up, but that part of this video magically disappeared, but the recipe will be down below. But I did add some Worcestershire sauce, some garlic, diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, and a whole can of beef broth. Then you're just going to stir this all together and let that liquid come to a boil. You might need to add a little bit more beef broth or water just depending on how much cabbage you put in, but you're going to have to make your own judgment on that. Then once the liquid comes to a boil, I'm adding some instant white rice to this and giving that a stir, putting some bay leaves in there because I forgot earlier, and just smushing that down in there so all the rice is in the liquid, and then I'm going to continue to let this simmer until the rice is tender. And then I just sprinkled some mozzarella cheese on my plate and I'm kicking myself for not trying this recipe sooner. I've seen it so many times and just kept skipping over it, but this was so good and you can make it really low carb and skip the rice, but my whole family loved it and I'll definitely be making this again because it's super easy and one skillet meal. Can't get any better than that. No dishes, but that is it for this week's What's for Dinner. Make sure you go check out Valerie's channel. You will not be disappointed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. La, la, la.